safety and welfare criteria um, from the safety design. And so I, I would be willing to, to vote in favor uh, of a motion um, that requires a professional engineer uh, to approve or stamp the, the design. I, I th I'm not even sure that some of these other conditions are enforceable. Uh, one, two, um, I can't remember what three was, but five uh, is, is questionable. Um, I guess as it stands right now, I, I would um, vote in opposition to this um, only because I don't want to belabor this application with uh, extensive conditions. I'm not even sure we can enforce, uh, nor do I want to belabor it. There's just, from my one, one opinion, uh, there's only one criteria that, um, uh, that I, I think is necessary, and that is the requirement for um, being stamped or approved by a registered or licensed engineer. Any other comments? I guess I would ask um, Maureen. Um, I know it's common practice for the planning board to attach conditions. Um, we have often required um, necessary approvals prior to construction activity, so I think that's a legitimate request. Um, the first two comments or conditions I propose with respect to keeping the ramp retracted and that the float wouldn't serve as a permanent mooring facility, I believe, or an echo of what the applicant has already stated, they would um, be how they would be using their facility. And I guess I propose them to um, allay a butter spears that this could easily be dropped down or used in a more permanent manner. And that is what the applicant has said he's not going to do. I, I can't answer the legality, though, of the requirement. Mr. Chairman, I, I just think that that's one instance where we're making conditions. I mean, this, this board doesn't necessarily have the, the, the right to uh, um, to enforce. Uh, the, well, the board doesn't enforce any condition, yeah. but with respect to the issue of, um, I, I think that it's implied in the application that the, this is not a permanent facility, that it uh, is going to be operational, operational. I think because of the extreme public concern and public presence, uh, that it does not, uh, it's not unreasonable to place conditions which reinforce the applicant's own statements. So as a statement of purpose would provide at the beginning of an ordinance, the conditions reinforce the board's understanding and its vote with respect to the critical issues uh, related to the use and um, safety. It certainly uh, has been stated that it's not intended to float, uh, be used as a permanent mooring. Uh, I think that's, again, to uh, reaffir reaffirm that. I think it's a reasonable condition to place so that there's absolutely no misunderstanding of the representation of the application before the board. Mooring permits, again, are to get back at the issue that was raised by Mr. Parkhurst with respect to concerns with respect to the chains and, and, and uh, relationship to other moorings. Uh, and, and that, again, I would want the uh, harbor master to review those as part of our uh, approval. Uh, before the applicant goes out and uh, review and approve prior to the applicant going out and being issued a building permit. Um, to have a, a registered engineer, engineer certify or stamp uh, the plans, a structural engineer in particular, I think is a reasonable request. Um, Mr. Morin uh, of T.Y. Lynn is a, is a civil engineer, I believe. Um, and perhaps even their structural engineers don't have expertise in this design field, but I think that's a reasonable request to deal with the issues of, of safety that we've heard and to provide a preliminary assurance, assurances with respect to the operational ability of, of the structure. And that changes in the design or operation or use of the gangway given the schematic nature of the design, I think, has to be, or, or it's, it's reasonable to state as a condition so that, again, the applicant's very much aware that the planning board is, is taking the application uh, and the applicant uh, at his presentation, and that if there are any uh, significant uh, unreasonable changes, uh, that 
that would require that the applicant again return to the board for additional review. Okay. Well, we have a we have a motion. We have a, a second, and we have discussions. Any other comments? I have one question. Where we go from here? Okay. Uh, is everyone clear on, on the, on the uh, conditions? I guess at this point I would add one more condition, and that the uh, natural resource protection uh, permit application and any other related permits uh, reflect the approval that's being granted tonight, and that if necessary, they, they'd be revised and resubmitted. Again, so that there's no confusion as to whether the ramp's a little shorter than, than, than the approval on the final drawings that we have before us. Do you have any objections to that, Ms. Lyon? No. Okay, we have a motion. It's been seconded uh, and amended. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. All those against? Motion carries three, four, two against. It's a simple majority. Yeah. You have your approval. I would uh, assume that you'll be seeing uh, Maureen and uh, the town staff between now and the time that you get your building permit. We'll be in touch with her uh, to ensure that we comply with all of the conditions and get uh, working with the engineer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, thank you to the public very much for attending tonight's meeting and for your input. Next item on this evening's agenda under new business is a Hillman public access waiver, a request by Sheila uh, Hillman for public access waiver to create an additional lot <coughs> located at 12D Broad Cove Road, section 19-4-2B public access waiver. Uh, it's my understanding that this application does not require a uh, completeness review. So if the board so wishes, we can proceed to uh, uh, reviewing the pertinent issues of this application this evening. Is the applicant present? Uh, before you get up, uh, Maureen, would you just, if there wasn't anything I hit on there, would you just hit on the pertinent issues? Um, Mrs. Hillman did, did, was on the agenda for last month and um, at my suggestion agreed to uh, hold her project back a month so that she was able to make some changes to the plan to reflect the, re the requests of town staff. You have, I believe, attached, hopefully, to your memo uh, comments from town staff and the vast majority of those comments have been addressed. Uh, Mrs. Hillman got approval for public access waivers in 1987. We created the original three lots. She's now coming forward with the, the last <coughs> lot on the road, which currently includes a, a, a large house and a guest house. And we'd like to divide that lot in two so that the guest house is on its own individual lot. And for that, while it does not require any subdivision review, it does require a public access waiver because it's a private road that it has frontage on and not a public road. Uh, I believe, uh, as I stated in my memo, that most of the issues that have been identified by town staff have been addressed. Uh, one of the outstanding issues is, is the public works director's request that the first 50 feet in from uh, Broad Cove Road be paved. And, and again, that's, that's his uh, concern, which he's expressed in the past, that the spray of gravel not, not continue on to a town road. Are there any questions? Would the applicant wish to make a brief uh, introduction or presentation? Uh, I'm Sheila Hillman, the owner of the property in question. I really have nothing to add to this. The, uh, the original 8.6 plus acres would now be divided into uh, two s smaller parcels, one of 3.3, .3, <coughs> and that else would be freestanding. It would essentially leave the the entire estate, which I have always thought of in terms of its entirety because it's the last of the Davis estate uh, for the people who originally owned all of Broad Cove. And it virtually leaves 
the property intact as it has been since 1987 with four dwellings. And it's the final request to come from me, so. Uh, would you please comment on the issue with respect to the uh, paving of the first 50 feet of the driveway? Yes, I would be happy to. We uh, do a lot of road work as a group. We're responsible. And we have the road graded once and sometimes twice a year. And the la two years ago, we had, instead of gravel, we had d Blue Rock's deep grade base used, which is a uh, very excellent material. It's, it's quite an upgrade from gravel. It becomes very dense and very hard immediately. And it is also supposed to track less gravel. Uh, so that is one of the reasons, uh, a purely practical reason, that I'm asking that be waived. The other is, is more emotional. And it is really just the fact that since we've owned the property for 13 years, we have, I think, been ex imposed on ourselves really strict standards as to what should happen to the property. If I put 50 feet of hardtop, I'm going to be reminded every time I drive through those stone pillars that I have failed in my own standards. Something has changed, and something is different, and, and it just no longer looks the way it looked before. So as I said, one is practical, the other is emotional. Apparently the town the town engineer was not familiar with this with this base. Uh, Peter Jellen of Blue Rock could probably um, attest to it, although I don't have any information for him. And Jimmy Murray could also attest to it because he's the one who does our road work and the last time he came he brought many, many truckloads of this stuff and it's very expensive. Thank you. Uh, how would the board like to proceed? Ms. Lardner? Um, I have a question for Maureen. I know this is our standard, but I'm curious, has there been some particular complaint from Public Works about the amount of gravel that's been deposited on Cloud Cove Road? Not on this particular road. It's just it's a general request that they make for all <laughs> gravel roads that abut town roads. Okay, then my other question is, we have waived this before, haven't we, on Old Ocean House Road, similar kind of estate setting? That, yes, you have waived in the past. And then I guess my last question, I might have missed it, is there was the issue of a turnaround. That has been addressed to the satisfaction of the staff members that raised it? In 1987, there was a turnaround design for the original, uh, for the original lots. Uh, it was mostly constructed as proposed in 1987. The uh, fire chief went up there with a ladder truck not too long ago, asked Mrs. Hillman to remove a couple of trees, and and was satisfied with the turnaround that's out there right now. And so he, he's basically said that he, he can live with it the way it is. Okay. Thank you. Um, if I can just speak to the... Uh, Ms. Parkers. The, I'm sorry. The uh, roadway issue, I drive by that uh, twice a day at least, uh, going home or leaving. But I have never noticed any gravel spilling out from this particular roadway onto Broad Cove Road. So I, for one, would not... Uh, have any aversion at all to waiving that 50-foot uh, paving requirement. Mr. Edson. Mr. Chairman, um, just two things. Um, I was hoping that Mr. Manthorn would be here um, to walk me through the, the, uh, the second paragraph of his letter um, where it deals with nine inches to ledge and, and the, the two sections, 1526B and 1527C. It's like a nut and shell game, but I, it, um, I, in this case, Mr. Manthorne is very knowledgeable about this and the replacement system uh, process. I, I trust his, uh, uh, I was hoping he'd be here to walk me through it personally, just so I'd gain the knowledge of, of uh, how that works. Um, <coughs> I find that, that that's acceptable and that uh, it goes into the review of uh, our code enforcement officer anyway. I think the issue of, of uh, tying the first 50 feet um, is uh, number one a uh, request of, of our public works director um, we typically follow his his request we don't always um, there are uh, the most recent uh, um, waiver of that I believe was um, Rosewood too many Rose subdivisions but the Mr. Pistachis, um Either it was not either it was not waived or during construction when it was not tired, uh, there's a significant amount of gravel that washes out 
uh, I, I think the, the times when we waive that is when the slope slopes away from or down from um, the public road. Um, it's a safety issue. It's a uh, of kicking gravel. I think there's a conscious decision to, in essence, create the, with this piece of land um, a subdivision, albeit except for the exception of, of, of the passing of time, uh, in a four lots, uh, I believe four or five, four lots, um, which creates more road travel. And, and uh, I think that that's a, a request that we should uphold. That's all the comments I have. <coughs> Thank you. Any other board members uh, have any comments? Mr. Wilcox? No. Mr. Carlson? Peter? No. Okay. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Um, one with respect to the gravel. Um, I think one thing that the board always is concerned about is the issue of rural character in the town. And uh, we've spoken a lot at uh, our workshop meetings about town character and trying to develop road standards that are would preserve town character. And we're particularly concerned with the New Jerseyfication, so to speak of uh, Cape Elizabeth, which it's just ripe for because there are so many dead-end conditions because of it being a radial town and, and located on the, on the coast. Uh, along with that is, uh, even as, as a landscape architect, my consistent uh, experience with, with gravels placed next to uh, paved hard surfaces that inevitably they will, they will uh, the, the gravel will be churned up because people either uh, having to accelerate to get out because of plows or whatever. Uh, and as Steve said before, or Mr. Etzel said before, that can be a safety issue. Uh, I also like to give the uh, Public Works Director the benefit of the doubt, um, but I would be very, um, at the same time I'm concerned with, with the safety issues, I'm also very interested in a way of stabilizing uh, gravels other than just uh, crushed bluestone gravel, nice uh, variable grade material with a lot of granite, crushed granite, and a way of stabilizing that so you don't have to worry about uh, putting black asphalt uh, over the surface so that you can maintain the rural character because uh, the example that I think of all the time is the Peastone courtyards in Europe uh, and in Canada that are, that are very lovely and the reason we don't have them here is because when the snowplow hits them, uh, the Peastone gets shot, either gets shot out of snowblower or ends up at the end of your driveway. Um, so I don't wish to, uh, I guess there are two ways of dealing with this. There are three ways. One is not to require it or to waive it completely. One is to find a compromise. That is to have a shorter section paid. Perhaps the length of an automobile makes some sense, given that uh, the major issue of acceleration, deacceleration, de and spilling of gravels onto the roadway are primarily at that first 20 feet, not necessarily 50 feet, except for a moving van. van. Uh, and lastly is to either shorten it and use our standard road base or to find other s an emulsion placed directly on the gravel uh, that's less impacting than, than just hard asphalt and maintains rural character. So uh, if the board, uh, that's one other way of dealing with the waiver issue. Uh, I think what I would like to, to propose is some sort of a compromise where you use a liquid emulsion, uh, place that down, and then place the same material that you have on the surface now uh, press that into the emulsion, and that will leave the material that you have uh, visible but, but more stabilized. It won't last forever, but it's, it's uh, more in keeping with the rural character and I believe less expensive than full base construction. Uh, with that, are there any other comments? Do I hear a motion? Motion for the board to consider. Findings of fact, number one, Sheila Hillman is proposing to create a new lot at 12D Broad Cove Road, which requires a public access waiver from the planning board. Number two, the plan substantially complies with section 19-4-2B public access waiver. Um, therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Sheila Hillman for a public access waiver to create a new lot at 12D Broad Cove Road be approved with one condition uh, that we have waived the paving requirement with the first 50 feet of the road. And if there, I am not knowledgeable about road construction, um, if there is a simple solution, and this is sort of off the record here, I'm not sure how to word it, 
but a simple solution to create the same look that's there now, but make it more stable to satisfy uh, the public works director. That's what I would like to see happen. Okay. <clears throat> we have a motion. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second it for discussion purposes. We have a motion to second. Uh, any discussion on the motion? My, my question is I didn't understand it. The condition. The one. Okay. The condition would be that some distance, I don't know if Steve was specific to the 50 feet, but that some distance for the first uh, 30 to 50 feet, whatever we decide, uh, would be stabilized, would, to use a technical term, would be a chip seal like construction. Uh, and that, and, and, uh, that construction, what happens is that you have a, a regular road base and you put down a liquid emulsion, which is essentially a liquid asphalt product, and place over that the aggregate. Uh, in this case, the aggregates would be the matching aggregates with the rest of the road, and that would provide a stabilization in that area that would have to have uh, probably um, maintenance every two to three years, but would have less vision, would have more, uh, it'd be more stable, it'd be uh, more stable than what's there now, and uh, uh, would have certainly less impact on the uh, rural character of the town. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Leidner. Um, I have two comments um, with all respect to the Public Works Director. Um, unless there's some demonstrated problem, if the driveway is working, I don't favor any particular change in that. Secondly, having gone through paving our driveway fairly recently, and we did examine chip seal because that's what we thought we wanted to do when we visited some sites that had been chip sealed by Blue Rock, I saw um, a tremendous amount of loose gravel that results from that. Um, treatment to it might not have been done well. I don't know the specifics of the driveway. So if that's looked to as a solution to the gravel problem, I don't know that it will be. Um. Could I have in my uh, <clears throat> motion? Uh, just a second. Uh, there is, um, I have one other question, um, and I failed to, to bring it up in my previous discussion, but I just would like for the record to have a clarification. That is on the issue of I hate doing this, but I have to. On the issue of the setback for uh, lot number three, uh, the code enforcement officer stated that the 30-foot uh, setback uh, is grandfathered because of uh, the house pre-existing. Uh, it, it seems to me, however, that the, that the house still does not meet the required structure front yard setback to a structure. And although the, the house is grandfathered in its location, I'm asking for the record of the town planner, uh, isn't the formation of this lot creating an, a non-complying lot? And is that uh, legal under the uh, ordinance? I, I don't want to get you into a situation where you've, you've created a non-complying lot, you go to sell it or do whatever, and you find out that you can't get title because uh, you have an illegal situation. The, I, can, I can attest to the fact that the code officer has reviewed this particular issue because I, I specifically requested that he go over this. I believe the approach he's taking is that when the road was put in, it was not a road, it was a driveway. And there's no required setback from a driveway. So that the, at the time that the guest house was constructed, it was legal. Therefore, once the lot is created, you couldn't put it. You couldn't put that structure na there now. But because it pre-exists the lot, it's grandfathered. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The problem we had is that uh, the original plan showed the building envelope uh, right next to. I mean, a lot closer than 30 feet to the road. And we asked the applicant to pull the building envelope back so that the envelope mirrored the front of the house along the road and then the back of the envelope is, is legal and conforming to our current setbacks. <clears throat> I, I believe that's an issue, but I don't, uh, it would seem to me to be appropriate if it is an issue to make it a condition of approval because it's not an issue specific to granting a public access waiver, whether that's um, the creation of that lot line uh, creates a new lot that then uh, it's not clear to me why that new lot isn't conforming when there's an opportunity to make it so. Uh, and, and what it would mean is just pushing the road, what, 10 feet or so farther away. Uh, I'm prepared this evening to go along with the motion 
uh, uh, as long as there's an understanding that if there's a condition again to if the co-enforcement officer were, were here this is something that we could ask of him but it would seem reasonable to me to place a condition that uh, that that lot be um, again reviewed by the code enforcement officer and if it's required to be moved that it be done so to be in compliance with the ordinance now you're suggesting that the lot be new, moved not that the road be moved the lot the lot line and i believe the road line. would have to go with it you want me to construct a new road is what no, you're i'm saying? not asking you to construct a new road uh, what i'm suggesting is that there's a section of road that because you are creating a fourth lot and again, I congratulate you. There's not many people in this community to get, get a four-lot subdivision without having to go through subdivision review. Uh, and that's what makes this unique. Uh, because you are now creating this fourth lot, uh, I only ask that it be in compliance with the ordinance if there's a right-of-way line associated with the alignment of the road or there's a requirement that the, new, uh, that, that the building, a new building be located so many feet or a building be located so many feet front yard from a private road. Which, 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 which one? Either one of those would would uh, apply in this case. Uh, that uh, again, the code enforcement officer uh, be sure that that uh, this plan is in compliance. But I, even if you uh, are forced to move the line, forced to move the road to bring the lot into compliance, if you were not to do that and it were found by some other party not to be in compliance, you'd be probably in, in a worse situation than, than our raising the question this evening, I would think. It's a lot line setback that we're talking about. Is that a front, front yard setback, setback is essentially what I'm talking about. Okay. Which could be circumvented by moving the line, not the lot, not the road. I don't know. Creating a need for a right of way across lot three. Uh, in, unless there's a state, as I understood it, there was a requirement in the ordinance that that uh, the building line be set back so far from, from the road line. That's right. The question was whether it's a road setback or a line, lot line setback. Mm -hmm. you move the, the lot to the middle of the road if you wish. I think we... A question for Maureen. Uh, this is, <clears throat> I assume, a private road and will remain so. Um, who actually owns this roadway? Mr. Kingsbury owns most of the road. He owns the road to this point. And I own everything beyond. Okay, then a, a question for you then is, if you sell one of these two parcels, um, will the parcel that you sell then own its particular section of roadway? As the lines are drawn now, Lot number 3A will own all of that road, and the new parcel, now labeled 3, will own no road, Whatever. but will have rights, utility rights <coughs> across it, which have been added as, as a note on the plan. Mr. Emery? Ms. Lodner. Your um, proposed condition, you weren't suggesting that the lot line be moved or the road be moved, that it be verified with be the verified code enforcement that officer? That the plan is in compliance with the ordinances. <coughs> I could, yeah, I can get a, a memo written by the code officer and place it in the file that he has determined that this lot is, is a buildable lot and the building envelope is legitimate. Both the envelope and the footprint. Okay. Um, I guess we have a uh, we have a motion before of us before us. It's been seconded. And the discussion was uh, the issue of both the uh, compliance of the lot and the issue of the pavement of the first 50 feet. Okay. I, I wish to change my motion if I could. Go ahead. Okay. Um, you want me to read the whole thing again, or no, I just, just want to drop the, the last condition I placed on it and just have it simply state that. Um, that we waived the requirement for pavement for the first 50 feet. Okay, do you want to add a condition with respect to the issue of the uh, front yard? Uh, I think that, can that be done administratively? Does that need to be part of the motion? Part of the motion. Okay. Um, then, let's see. Condition that um, code, enforcement or code enforcement officer write a memo to be placed in the file, uh, the appropriate file for this property, uh, stating that it is a conforming lot at his earliest convenience. Okay. 
We need a second to the amended motion. <coughs> I'll second it. We have a motion second. Any further discussion? I just would like to ask Maureen if that seems appropriate, the motion that's been made. Any particular? It seems fine. Okay, so it's clear what's being asked of the code officer and what will is it clear what will happen if it's not a conforming lot or will this, this approval just be null? Yeah, I would assume if, if for some reason he decides that this isn't a buildable lot that uh, we'll be seeing Mrs. Hillman next month. So. Okay. okay. Um, any further comments? Uh, I, I have heard that the motion has been uh, Seconded now with the waiver requirement for the 50 feet of pavement, there's been discussion with, with respect to chip seal. It's not unusual for chip seal to be, when it's originally be placed, to have the, the top aggregate be kicked out and, and remain loose until there's been a lot of activity on the road, which takes some time with, with the residential driveways. And there's also variable quality that can be achieved depending upon the aggregates and, and the workmanship that goes into it. Um, in, in uh, deference to the rural character of the town and in deference to the public works director, I'm wondering if the board would entertain uh, an additional uh, condition that, uh, that the applicant be responsible for maintaining and keeping clear uh, the entranceway of any loose aggregates that uh, end up in the middle of Broad Cove Road. Okay, could you clarify that? For well, me? the reason for that is that we have, testimony, we have testimony this evening that it's not a problem, that, that you've driven by several times a day and you don't see it. Uh, if, in fact, the public works director's concerns are valid, that the gravels do get out on the roadway, uh, the public works department is now left with the issue of, of having to deal with something that, they, that could have been avoided as part of this review process. I have no objection to that at all. I, I don't know that this board has ever requested as a, as a condition of an approval that um, private property owner maintain public roads, and that's what you're asking. Well, let's ask, let's let's think of it this way then: Is there a way of of having the public works director review uh, or report if there are any maintenance issues with respect to this road over the next uh, six or twelve months? And if so, that the uh, applicant will come back before the board. Um, I don't want to state blankly that the applicant would pay the first 50 feet but that the issue would be addressed? I think we're just making it very onerous and, and uh, um, we either decide that we'll waive that requirement or, or um, that it will be a gravel road. Right. I mean, we, have, uh, we have a um, motion and seconded. Any other comment? All those in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. All those against? The uh, motion's been defeated. Do we have any other motions? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wilcox. Uh, I'd just like to offer the following comment. Uh, given the recommendation by the Public Works Department, I'd be very reluctant uh, to approve an alternate scheme without, or, or rather with, with an absence of some type of binder without uh, a site walk and an inspection of what the uh, area actually looks like. Any other comment on that? <clears throat> Just remind the board that the, the vote was uh, not a denial of the, the request. We just voted uh, in the negative for that that one proposal. That's correct. And I'm trying to find the uh, the write up so I can make another motion. Or somebody, anybody can. <coughs> can I just offer a, a comment? I, I believe we um, requested or required. Um, developer Rosewood subdivision to pave the first 50 feet of his roadway. I don't know if any of you have driven by that since that time, but there is gravel actually on Woodland Road and on the paved section that we required him to do. And it actually looks worse and probably is because maybe it's because of the slope. Uh, maybe the little stones have a tendency to roll down into the roadway. This is a very flat site. Um, and it's been my experience seeing people come out of that driveway that they don't speed up. The sight distance there is, I mean, I don't know how many hundreds of feet it is, but it's fine. 
I mean, you can see people when you come around the turn on Broad Cove Road, and you can see them when you turn onto Broad Cove Road from Route 77. So there's no really no reason to accelerate sharply unless it's just a driving style. I think there are two issues. Number one, the Rosewood uh, Road wasn't built to the specs that of the, of the plan. There was supposed to be a driveway swale if you look at the road profile, and that's not in, in that plan, so it's a straight slope to the road. Um, that's just the way it came out. Uh, number two, the issue with, with gravel, regardless of, of whether it's a deep uh, packing base or not, uh, the first five to ten feet gets covered with um, the road, uh, the, the winter sand, and the sand from sanding the road, and the sand continuously deteriorates any packing gravel. It makes it more sandy, so it continuously spits out. Um, I think it's an issue that, that we support. I, I would be willing to look at that and say the, these uh, stone pillars are X number of feet back from the, the road, and that, that we stop short of there uh, to preserve some, some uh, character of the, the existing private road. Um, but it, there is an issue of the first, whether we pick 50 feet or, or, or 25 or 30 feet. Um, I think in compromise, we should support what the town, town works uh, um, the public works is, I mean, in essence, we have the same size, almost the same size subdivision in Rosewood as we have here. <clears throat> B has been put in my bonnet, and I, it's a very good B, is at this point, I guess, uh, just to diverge a minute, if the applicant has anything that she would like to uh, propose as a possible uh, alternative to a full 50 feet of pavement? Uh, I would be happy to do whatever the board asks me to do. Uh, in the interest of having an approval this evening instead of coming back at some later time. I would only like to say that we are solving a problem that we don't have with this particular road, and I would like you to consider that. We do not track gravel onto Broad Cove Road. We do not track rain. We do not track anything. We are very careful owners. Mr. Kingsbury, I think, can attest to the amount of funds that we have put into keeping this road the way a, a different board from this asked me to keep it in 1987. Mm -hmm. If anything, we have improved it since then, and we will continue to improve it. I am very willing to do whatever the board says. I would hope that if we are going to put some new surface down, that it would end short of the pillars. Mm -hmm. And I would also hope that that would uh, satisfy the board. Mr. Emery? Ms. Lardner. Um, again, in support of not paving this, if the public works director is simply recommending this because this is the ordinance standard and this is which what he wants to see everywhere. I, I guess I would point back to our past history of waiving this if it seems aesthetically proper or what have you. Um, I, I guess as a compromise, although I personally wouldn't favor it, I could see some sort of paving material up to the pillars and not beyond. I don't I don't see the need for any of it, but if it has to go, I'd hope it wouldn't have to go beyond that if that seems a logical break to the residents. Um, I, again, I, I don't like to fix problems if they're not really problems or non-existent problems. Well, I, I, as a compromise, I would see that, that, that the paving would not be from the property line. The paving paving would be from road edge, I and mean, so if we went back either 25 or 30 feet, you'd still short, end up short of, of the stone pillars by 15 feet or so. Uh, I don't have the scale rule, but uh, I pretty easily. <coughs> well, the scale of the plan is 1 inch equals 50 feet. It's about 35 feet from the road edge. It seemed to me that 30 feet with any normal automobile is certainly uh, more than adequate uh, as, a, as an apron approach to a, to a road. And it uh, seems to me as a compromise, as a mid-level investment uh, for the applicant to, to think it's something that's appropriate, that's uh, acceptable to the public works director, like a chip seal, particularly if you can use the same aggregate that's already there. Uh, even if you were to use something, and I know this wouldn't last very long, but something is a cementitious type admixture that would enhance the compaction of it. Uh, again, it would kick out over time, but it would be something that could be maintained every year. Uh, or, I'm not going to use the word oils because that perhaps is not environmentally sound, but that was traditionally the method used. Um, I, I think, uh, Tom, uh, Mr. Emery, uh, 
that if you can um, give me a term that I'll okay. be willing to, to propose a motion for either um, uh, asphalt paving or whatever the term is. That, that, the, the, first, that the, the first 30 feet be stabilized with an emulsion based over which matching aggregates will be placed and compacted? I said a simple term. Chip seal. <laughs> Chip seal using matching aggregates. Acceptable to the public works director. Is accepted by the public works director. Including, okay. I have a, a motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Sheila Hillman is proposing to create a new lot at 12D Broad Cove Road, which requires a public access waiver from the planning board. Number two, the plan substantially complies with section 19-4-2B public access waiver. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Sheila Hillman for public access waiver be cr to create a new lot at 12D Broad Cove Road be approved subject to the following condition, that the first 25 first 30 feet of the private road be either asphalt paved or substitute the terminology that Mr. Emery utilized. Chip seal, chip like seal. stabilization. Like stabilization. Did you want to add, add the condition about the um, letter from the code enforcement officer for the file? As, for to, as to the... Yes, uh, I'm sorry. Change that to conditions. Number two, um, code enforcement officer writing a letter for the file for this particular lot saying it's a conforming lot. Amended as such. Thank you. Lot, uh, let's be lot three. Three. Did you want to add to the first condition? That was supposed to be acceptable to the public works director. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I have a motion. I have a second. Reluctantly, second. Any further discussion? Ms. Lard. I have a question. I guess for Maureen, if. Um, Mrs. Hillman goes to Public Works and he's adamant about paving or paving 50 feet or um, if, and Mrs. Hillman didn't agree with that, or if Mrs. Hillman were able to um, convince Public Works that what they have is an appropriate solution, I assume it would be an easy process for her to come back and get that amendment before the board if she chose to do that. Is that a possibility? Yeah, she could actually go on a consent agenda. Okay. Which amendment is that now? About the paving, if it, you're saying. I just mean if if either there's no if terms aren't reached with respect to the paving, if there's a mm -hmm. disagreement, okay. she could come back and ask for Certainly. clarification, or if she could convince Bob Malley, mm -hmm. she could come back and have it as is. That's a good point. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the last item on the agenda. Just before we close, I'd like to remind the board that we uh, are scheduled for a workshop this week in August. And we'll continue our discussion of the town center ordinances. We were supposed to have a uh, subcommittee. The subcommittee hasn't had any meetings. Have you had any discussions with uh, John? No, but I will soon. Okay. Very, right. very soon. Okay. And uh, how does our agenda look for bringing up the issues with respect to uh, the town manager's memo regarding the uh, accessory unit? Um, I believe what the planning board may want to do is take a little time to do some <coughs> housekeeping in terms of um, uh, unfortunately, having a select and the vice chair, uh, the accessory dwelling units, the, um, the growth areas, and another issue, which is um, the open space standard and subdivision ordinance. So I think the board may want to take some time and uh, decide what you want to work on next, because it has been a practice that uh, one at a time has been the most productive way to do it. it certainly has. Is that any other comments this evening? We have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor?
meeting adjourned. Sticky, sticky. Proof. That's out.